A Chipped Edge by A.C. Danvers Chapter 3 Want to join a pirate crew? The question entered Sela's ears as if they were merely jumbled noises heard through a pane of thick glass, recognizable as words but devoid of distinction or meaning. She blinked back at the captain, as if waiting for some background process in her brain to finally turn the sounds into comprehensible speech. Three registered the confusion and continued. Look, I don't need to tell you that going back to Calix isn't going to be an option any time soon, and there's a lot of corpse space between you and trying your luck as a fed refugee. Now, I could drop you off at the Warpgate station and leave you to chance, but I can tell you, I have been down that road, and it took more than luck to survive this long. We are still a free ship, for as much as that's worth anymore, and sheltering refugees is what we were founded for, among other things. There's work for you here, if you'll take it. Simon's a great engineer, but the finer details of computers aren't really his strong suit, and... Three paused, closing their eyes for a moment, and trying to keep a slight twinge of pain from their voice. We, we've got an extra bunk that's been lying empty for too long. So what do you say? You want to risk running from the man only to end up under the heels of a different one? Or do you want to run free as the missing fourth of our four and three? The whole crew studied her face, waiting for a response. Sila's face tensed in an exhausted attempt at concentration. I, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't know much of anything right now. I was just a local IT admin until a few hours ago. Now I'm... Probably a wanted fugitive. I'm going to need a bit to think about this. Three nodded. I understand. I apologize. I can tell after our time today you are someone who likes to give things a lot of thought, in spite of sometimes missing some of the details. I tell you what. There's not much difference anything makes until we at least get to the warp gate. You ride with us, and when we get to the station, we'll check the bulletins and you can make the call as to where you want to go next. For now, how about we put you up in that extra bunk and you can get some rest. You've had a long day. If I were you, I'd be ready to sleep for a week. Three smiled warmly and tilted their head. Sila exhaled, relieved to have dodged a difficult question for now and nothing she had heard in a long time sounded so inviting as the concept of a safe bed. Okay, it's a deal. Excellent. Three clapped their paws together in delight. Let's see to that room, shall we? Simon volunteered to lead Scylla to her new quarters. He walked her down the corridor, past the spot where Scylla and the captain had met when she first boarded the ship, and stopped at a door at the end of the hall simply marked four. Simon keyed some numbers into a pad by the door. Here we go. If you could just tap your paw to the reader here. He gestured toward the pad, and Sila placed it as instructed. The pad responded with two beeps, and then the door slid open with a hiss of air to reveal the room inside. There. Now you should have access to this room. If the reader gives you trouble, just breathe on it. Don't know why, but it usually helps. Silva nodded and glanced into the room. It was a strange mix of tidy and neglected. Whoever had lived in the room before had clearly kept it very clean, but even in space, dust is eternal. The bed was neatly made, the shelves still stood full of books and other personal effects and resting on the desk against the wall still sat a single framed photo. Sila stepped into the room hesitantly, feeling as if she was intruding on someone else's space in doing so. She glanced back at Simon, as if asking permission to proceed. Oh, yeah, Simon shuffled his feet and glanced away for a moment. I guess the captain hasn't... He trailed off, as if avoiding an awkward subject. It's okay, though. Just 
Be careful with things. Silda slowly crossed the room and stopped a glance at the picture on the desk. It was the captain, with their arm around another panda, cheeks pressed together and a big grin on their face. The other wore an embarrassed smile, a hint of hesitation or awkwardness to the expression, but also obvious affection. She opened her mouth to ask about the photo, but paused. Instead, Simon spoke, almost as if to change the subject both felt hanging in the air. That was an amazing thing you did back there. I never met anyone who hacked a whole colony before. I think even Alvis was impressed, though he'd never admit it. Thanks. Scylla's voice was slightly flustered from the praise. He's just projective is all. It's kind of his job to be, especially after what happened with... He stopped himself. Anyway, I should let you get some rest, captain's orders and all. Scylla sat on the bed. Yeah. Thank you, Simon. If you hadn't trusted me on the bridge back there... Simon flushed, but tried to play it off. Uh, of course. If the captain trusted you to be on the bridge, then I trust you. He seemed to have that effect on people, she mused, and glanced at the photo again. Simon tilted his head quizzically, but then his ears twitched, one ear swiveling to catch a sound in the direction of the bridge. Damn, 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 blasted ventilators griping again. I gotta move. He started toward the bridge, but stopped himself mid-step. Sleep well, Scylla. Scylla nodded in thanks. Simon keyed the panel again, and the door slid closed. Scylla flopped backwards on the bed, feeling the exhaustion catch up with her by the second. She spoke aloud to the now-empty room. What have I gotten myself into? Sleep came quickly, and with no reply. Scylla's eyes slowly opened, then winced closed again with the realization she'd left the cabin lights on when she passed out. As she gently opened them again to ease into the light, she made a mental note to find where the nearest off switch is for next time. Next time. Would there be a next time? Was she already thinking in those terms? She shook her head free of that thought's grasp and reached in a pocket for her data pad to check the time. She drew the pad to her face, glanced at the clock, and immediately recognized it for meaningless numbers. She had no idea when she'd slept, and given that she was currently in the vacuum of space, the exterior window was not any more informative about the time elapsed. Groggily, she got to her feet, straightening her outfit and running a paw through her hair. Her stomach rumbled slightly. She realized she hadn't eaten in... Oh, right, time again. Who's to say what time means at this point anyway? Regardless, it was enough motivation for her to move, and perhaps seek out Alvis or the captain and see if stowaways and prospective hirees were still allowed access to the ship's mess. She approached the door, pawed the panel, and it slid open to reveal the surprised face of Simon staring back at her. Oh good, you're awake, he smiled, a bright smile, eyes closed but face radiant. We're just about to approach the warp gate. You're going to want to see this. Once opened again, his brilliant golden eyes were as bright as his smile. Sila was startled for a moment, but... As the words registered, her ears perked up. Oh, right, she thought. I'm in space. Images of things she'd only read about flashed through her mind. Post-sleep sluggishness and the anxieties of the previous day's events quickly slipped into the past and were replaced by excitement. As the realization dawned, her feet twitched to move almost of their own volition, and she nearly started into a jog before remembering that Simon was still standing in the doorway. Well, let's go then, she blurted to a now equally startled Simon, who backed away and then followed her hurriedly down the corridor to the bridge. 
As she reached it, the sight outside the front glass stopped her in her tracks. Looming in front of the ship and filling the view more and more by the moment, the warp gate rested in space with the inevitability of ancient stone, a great monument to the achievements of the now-dead alliance. The massive octagonal ring might have been a wonder of the ancient universe, yet its uniform shape and massive painted designation number conveyed the even more shattering realization that it was but one of the many identical monoliths cast across the galaxy. The space within the ring rippled and shimmered, warping the light beyond it even as it seemed to echo with the shadows of whatever dwelled on the other side of its massive event horizon. A space station sat before the ring, seeming from this angle almost to float on the waves of the ring's warp field. Despite being large enough to accommodate several dozen spacecraft of every size and description, it appeared like a tiny life raft, adrift in a great sea. Sila's eyes sparkled with wonder, and Simon stood beside her, a delighted grin on his face. She stepped forward towards the glass, as if to take in more of the sight, but it simply was too much for the eyes to process as the ship grew closer. Welcome to Calix Gate, the captain intoned, gentle respect in their voice. Scylla simply gaped, her eyes still drinking in as much detail as she could. The captain smiled. Thanks for listening and for supporting queer science fiction. The original text of this episode is available on AO3 via the link in the show notes. This podcast is hosted by Anchor, but should soon be available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed this program, please subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes. Safe flying!